To promote my new flower shop, I had one place print my business cards, another print my brochures, and a third, my signs. Now my roses aren't red, my violets aren't blue, my geraniums look dead, and I don't know what to do. Staples can help your business stand out with signs, banners, and brochures that are a true reflection of your company. And now at Staples, spend $50 or more on print and marketing services and get $5 off your next in-store purchase. Now my business is blossoming and I'm spending less green. Exclusions apply. In-store only. And 623-18. Lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson.
To God be the glory, for God is good. Newsflash, God is good all the time. And all the time, my God is good. Welcome to the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life, from ministry to marketplace. That's right, you were born to win. You are more than a conqueror. I pray that you know that. I pray that you receive that. And I don't want you to ever give up nor give in because only the winners will get the prize. My sisters today, I greet you, Godspeed. Hey, listen, it is um, a thrilling Thursday. It is a Thursday to thrive, and for that I give God the praise. My name is Loretta Petit. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm out of town right now. Uh, I am in Kansas City, Missouri, and I am sharing with the Black CEO Movement And the movement is absolutely awesome. Uh, I just thank the Lord for the visionary, a young man, Trevor Ott. I want to give a shout-out to him, to all of the leadership, the players, to Ms. Diana Watson, who's doing a great job, and also to uh, Mr. Barrett Matthews, to Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes on that leadership team, uh, to so many of them. They do so well every morning. And that's a powerful call. If you can chime in in the morning time, Monday through Friday, they're giving you all of this great content absolutely free. So I do want you to uh, avail yourself to be able to uh, get some of this goodness that's flowing through your phones every weekday morning if you simply get up and take the time to dial in. Well, of course, you know, this broadcast is focused on women winning, and I do have a nonprofit that I'm asking all intercessors to pray with me about. Uh, It is a a plan that I had when I said I left my full-time job in broadcasting to make it a sideline job. Um, It was the way it was orchestrated. I mean, Holy Spirit had me uh, in the mix every step of the way, and I'm so excited about that. But my goal was to be able to run the nonprofit and to be able to do that in a full-time capacity, and it shall come to pass. Somebody repeat, it shall come to pass. That's right. Because we are winners, and we win. And there is no good thing that God is going to withhold from us. So intercessors pray about Petite Kendeka, Women Entrepreneurs Incorporated. It is incorporated. It is um, already birthed into the earth realm. I'm just now waiting for God's manifestation. I'm waiting for God just to gently touch it or to blow on it because great things are about to come forth. I'm excited about it. I want to say to you winners, all you women that are in Christ Jesus, know that you are a winner. I want you to learn to affirm yourself. I want you to learn to write down positive affirmations and to be able to repeat those. Write them on your mirror or stick them on your wall, wherever you want to do it, but make sure that you do them each and every day and make your affirmations. And once you've made the affirmation, I want you to walk as if you truly believe what you just said. So if you say that I am a gift from God, you walk in the earth as if you are a gift. Be a blessing. Gifts bring joy. Bring joy to people, right? So you do that. If you say that, I am confident. I want you to walk through the earth realm like you have confidence. Just trust because you said and you should believe, all right? So affirm yourself each and every day. Now, listen, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win. You must prepare to win, and love this one, you must expect to win. Now, there are people who say that they are winners, but you have to say it as an affirmation and believe in it. You've got to plan to win. You've got to prepare to win, and you've got to expect to win. I find that people don't like to plan anymore. People like to do things off the cuff. They like to do things at the last minute while adrenaline is flowing very high. They don't like to plan I want to just put it out there. I want to see us get back into planning mode. I want us to put on our planning hats. I don't know what it is. We don't like the silence around us, what it is. We don't like 
people uh, not being with us, chattering in our ears, but sometimes we've got to steal away, guys, so that we can plan it out. We've got to plan it out. Now, God does not bow down to our plans. But God always looked for those who were doing something. As you look at the disciples, he found those who were doing something. So do something. Plan it. Plan it out. And if God wants to intercept, God is God. Let him. But he's only going to intercept to bring you to a higher place. But until that time, plan it out. Prepare to win and expect that you will. Okay, so I uh, do want to keep that at the top of brain. Remember to affirm yourself, plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. And also, intercessors, pray for the Petite Kendeka, that's K-E-N-D-E-K-A, Petite Kendeka, Women Entrepreneurs Incorporated. Now, while I'm in Kansas City, I've never been here before, my very first time coming here. And I look at this expanse of land with um, grassy coverings on it. I'm like, wow. This is, it puts me in the mind of a Shreveport. In the area where I am, I see there's a big residential area, a lot of residences and hotels and whatever. Then I see there's a big expanse of land with this grassy, um, grassy area, and it's like, wow, this is awesome. But I like it. I'm good. I'm staying in a very, very nice place, and food is good, uh, very comfortable here. So I'm preparing to go to my first, my VIP session uh, in just a little short while. But for all of those who may be listening who are part of the Black CEO, I want to say hats off to you uh, because you have found something good when you found that. Now, we are building our chapter in the city of New Orleans, the Black CEO movement, and um, I do want all of you that may be listening from the New Orleans area, the greater New Orleans area, to tap in. We have our, we were going to have it last month, but the storm (laughs) shut us down. So we're going to have our first Meet and greet on the third Friday of this month. The third Friday of this month, we're having our first meet and greet. And if you would bear with me, I can give you the date on that. The third Friday is June the 15th. June the 15th, come on out. We're going to be at the Rue Carre. The Rue the Carre, R-O-U-X, Carre, C-A-R-R-E, the Rue Carre, located at 2000 Oretha Castle Haley Boulevard. We are going to have a wonderful time sharing in our first meet and greet. I want to encourage you to bring a friend. Don't come alone. You can come alone. We love you, and you'll feel the love. But come and and share with your friends. Bring your friends with you, those who are budding entrepreneurs, business owners, or entrepreneurs uh, in their own right. We want them to come as well. We want to share with you the vision of the Black CEO movement, how you can take a leadership role, how you can be in the mix of it all, have an opportunity to expand your reach, get on a stage where you're talking to people nationally. All of these things are being availed to us now, guys, now. Don't wait until the ship has sailed and say, oh, you know what, I would have, I could have, but you didn't, okay? So now I want you to know that you want to tap into this, look into this. How much does it cost you just to check it out? Nothing. If something is being said that is really going to be an uh, added blessing to my life, something that's going to be really good for me, get nuggets of inf- information for my inspiration as well as for my advancement, and it doesn't cost me anything to go and see if it's true, I'm going to go check it out. So listen. Check it out. That's all I'm saying. Now, I know there's no one size fits all nowhere in this United States of America. Everything is not for everybody. Why is that? Even Jesus dying on the cross, giving his life as a ransom, he saved, he he died to save the world. But will the entire world accept him? That's the challenge we face. People just don't always have the mindset to do what's good for them. So that's why we intercede. That's why we pray, because we do want the whole world to accept salvation. Um, Now, uh, going back to my former thought, dealing with black CEO, once you check it out, you may say, oh, I'm not ready for this level yet. I'm not ready for that. Okay, well, that's cool. I understand. But at least you checked it out. But I want to know, I want you to know this. If it doesn't cost you nothing and you can get it on your phone every morning, Jot down your notes, put those notes into action, and find yourself doing better in business. Wouldn't you want to do it? That's all I'm saying. So um, I'm going to give you that phone number where you can call. So get out a piece of paper, and I want you to grab yourself a pen or a pencil. 
So I can give you this phone number where you can dial in tomorrow morning, as a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow morning, and you'll be able to check out what I'm talking about. Now, I know it's going to be a little bit different tomorrow because most players are in conference, but at least you'll have an idea of what it's like. Okay, you'll have an idea of what it's like. So uh, I'm going to give you this number, and um, please, by all means, put it in your calendar, write it down. Okay, you ready for it? You're probably more ready for it than I am to give it right. I'm working on it (laughs) because I want you to have this number. I really, really do. Um, Okay, here we go. The number to dial in, you can dial in as early as 7. That's when you get started, but it's a little silly at 7. Now, they're laughing a lot, and they're, you know, clowning around a bit, but it's still good word because they share their thought of the day. Um, talking about the leadership team, they share their thought of the day. And, again, let me just say this. It's an abbreviated team uh, because of the conference that's getting kicked off tonight. So it will be an abbreviated team. You will not get the, you know, the full effect because it's an abbreviated team. Um, But you'll still get goodness, okay? You'll still get something that you could use. So the phone number to call in tomorrow at 7 Central Time is 206-402-0100. That's 206-402-0100. And the code is 213-807. The code, once again, is 213-807. So that's for the Black CEO Movement. This is all the excellent very, very rich, free stuff that you get on the calls in the morning, okay? So I want you to dial that in tomorrow, 7 o'clock Central Time, and listen in and jot some notes. And when you go back, read over your notes, and you'll find out, wow, I go to seminars and I pay $70, $120 for the seat to get this kind of information. So while it's still free, I want you to tap on in, my friend, tap on in, okay? So if you have a um, question for me even now, um, a comment. I want you to call me here uh, on our podcast, The Loretta Petite Show, um, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. You can call me right now if you've got a question or comment, and I'm going to give you that number. The number to call me here, you can jot this down, put this in your notes as well, because each week it'll be the same number. If you want to reach me right now, you can call me at 646 564 9842. That's 646-564-9842. If you have a question, if you have a comment, I would love to hear what you have got to say. I want to give a shout out at this time to Mr. Jerry Royce. Thank you, sir. Look forward to laying my eyes on you at some point. He makes it all possible. And to my girl who loves the Lord, I mean just the image of love herself, Miss Kimmy Kim, my wonderful producer, uh, the founder of of uh, Eden Magazine, and she is going higher. The Lord has got some more great things in store for her. So I'm just so excited about uh, just the connections. I'm excited about how God allows our networks to really work to his glory, to God be the glory. Now, listen, we're talking about women winning, winning at life. How do you win at life? Well, when you look around and you see losing, uh, you see people losing around you, then you'll understand, wow, either you're on the winning end or you're on the losing end. You see people that um, cannot seem to go any further because they've locked down their minds. They have locked down their minds. And when your mind is locked down, then there are so many things that you're missing out on when you lock down your mind. You have got to understand that you've got to have an open mind to the things of God. You have got to allow Holy Spirit to speak to you, and you have got to be able to receive what God is saying and put it into action. So when the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it is giving me the authority. It is speaking authority into my life. It is speaking ability into my life. That's some awesome stuff right there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I've got authority, and, you know, I've got the ability to make this happen, obviously, because it says I can do. I can do. Philippians 4.13. <laughs> How can you not love this uplifting, soul-stirring, take-on-the-world promise? I can do all things through Christ. 
So when you stop short, ask yourself, did Christ stop me or did I just stop myself? Uh, did Christ say I can't go any further or did I say I can't go any further? Uh, did Christ say that I can't win this or did I just say I can't? Did I take myself out the game or did God take me out the game? Come on now. You can do all things through Christ as well That uh, because you can do all things through Christ because he strengthens you, all right? There's more encouragement in this verse than you might think of at first. And I want to go to Bible study tools to check out. You see, Paul wrote these words while facing some of the worst trials in his life. Despite the threat of pain and death, he realized that God gives us strength in ways that go beyond the good times and the everything is okay moments. The strength of Christ reaches right down into our specific turmoil and our personal pain. So there's a way that we can truly do all things. Here's one way, through trials, through trials. When we think of victory, we often envision champions with trophies or medals. We think of spotlights and TV coverage and fame. We think of parades and celebrations. But true victory often happens far away from the crowd. In Christ, we will certainly see joyful times, just as anyone does. But what truly sets us apart as followers of Jesus Christ is that we can find victory in the most difficult trials. See, James knew that this type of struggle would happen, and it happens to all of us. He knew it very well, and yet he could honestly say, consider it pure joy, my brother, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith will develop perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. That's James 1, verses 2 through 4. Now, James is an awesome book. Oh, yeah. Thank you, James, a five star. I would encourage you to take some time to read that book. Now, the Lord Jesus gives us strength. He said, I can do all things. He gives me strength. Christ gives us strength to not only endure the tough times, but also to grow during those tough times. See, we aren't meant to just crawl through the pain and mope and complain, but we're meant to see our faith blossom right in the face of our troubles, right in the face of our storms, right in the face of our battles. God equips us with armor that we need to stand firm. Do you believe that? Somebody say amen. Hey, you got a comment? Don't think you can call me. Don't forget whether you can call me up. Got a question? You can call me up. Listen, the second way that we can do all things through Christ is through contentment. If there's ever a fight that goes on in us as human beings, it's the constant struggle to be content. Disappointments, setbacks, all these things come at us in life and delays. It keeps hammering. Uh, it keeps it keeps hammering. These things keep hammering away at us, right? Now, apart from Christ, we quickly trip and stumble our way into bitterness and entitlement. You know how you want acts when they're entitled. <laughs> After all, this world tells us that we deserve to be happy, right? And that it's easy to buy into that mindset because we can take on that sense of entitlement. That's not what the Lord is all about. That's not what he wants us to do. In Christ, we move our eyes off the things that we don't have, right, the frustrations that surround us, and we put them where they need to be. Paul's words from prison show spiritual truth in action in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 12. He says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or whether I'm hungry, whether I'm living in plenty or whether I'm in want. He says, I know what it is, and he has learned to be content. So how can we have this type of contentment? Well, I want to say by turning our attention away from what we think we need to the only thing that truly matters. For the pagans run after all these things. Yes, pagans, the pagans, they run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows what you need. He knows what I need. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. It's going to be added unto us. Now, isn't that good news? That's a promise from the Most High. After all, our hope isn't in what we have or don't have here on earth. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. And also remember now, we must contend for the faith, and we must remember that godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is sure that we can take nothing out. First Timothy chapter 6. Finally, I said to you that we can do all things through Christ 
through trials, we see that we can, through contentment, we see that we can, and, of course, through his victory. That's number three. Our greatest victory, however, isn't really ours at all. We can face any situation and be content no matter what happens because of one important fact. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, we need to give thanks to God because it is God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus died in our place, and he came back to life as a true conqueror, and all that he accomplished gets credited to what? To us, to our account. We didn't earn a single bit of it, y'all, nothing. Jesus did the work, but we're guaranteed so much because we accepted that great work that he did. Oh, my God. How awesome is that? That makes me a winner. That means that you cannot talk me down. You cannot convince me to be down for the count, no matter how hard you try. Because the word of God tells me that I am more than a conqueror. Amen, somebody. John chapter 16 and verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, Jesus said. But take heart. That means be strong, be confident. Uh huh. Jesus said, because I've overcome the world. Be encouraged, my brothers, and especially you, my sisters. Because you are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So hang on in there. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up and never, ever, ever give in. You are indeed a winner. And I pray that you start to think like that, see yourself like that, have a winning attitude. Now, I just want to caution you. Let me throw caution to the wind. Let me throw caution to the wind. Let me say this. Even though. You are a winner, even though the promises of God for you are yea and amen. I do want you to remember this one important thing. It's so easy for this thing called hardiness and this thing called pride to come and attach itself to you like a magnet. I want you to shake off hardiness. I want you to shake off pride because these are the things that will cause your blessings to get hung up as on a tree branch. They'll never get down to you because the Lord hates the way pride looks. So we can't even look like we're proud. The Lord doesn't like that. He loves it when we can walk in humility, not flaunting that God has blessed us, but just being grateful. If we're going to boast, he said to boast in him. He said to boast in Don't boast about yourself, your name. Don't boast about where you came from. Don't boast about who your parents are, how fat your bank account is. None of those things. But the mere fact that you were blessed by the Most High God, who wants to bless everybody who would receive, he doesn't want you to boast. He wants you to humble yourself. He wants you to humble yourself. Humble yourself as you do what you do, as you receive your blessings, as he matures and develops you, as you grow into this awesome being that you were designed to be. He always wants you to be humble. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, winning means you're willing to go longer, that you're willing to work harder, that you're willing to give more than anyone else. Are you a winner? Since Lombardi once said that. So my question to you is, are you truly a winner? Well, Jesus Christ calls you winner. What do you call yourself? I pray that you will echo what the Lord calls you. You are indeed a winner. And I love this quote. Winners are not people who never fail, but they are people who never quit. I pray you've been blessed today. This has been the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. And until next time, may God bless you and may he keep you. This is indeed my prayer. Bye-bye. So we worship, so we worship.
we pray, so we worship your holy name, so we worship, so we pray, so we worship your holy name. right to your office or door or porch or backyard or front yard or apartment or dorm or castle or shop or work site or wherever Panera delivers for lunch, dinner, and everywhere in between. Click the banner to order or visit PaneraBread.com. Participating locations only. Panera. Food as it should be.